Hi, welcome to Pikai Pharmacy. So today we are going to learn about anti-amoebic drugs. So amoebiasis is a protozoal infection caused by anti-amoeba histolytica and it is transmitted through fecal-oral route. Now it has two stages of development. One is cyst and another one is troposoid. The transmission of amoebiasis occurs due to the cyst form as it is present in the fecal matter of the infected person. Now when this contamination occurs in our food and water, then the amoebiotic cyst reaches our intestine where it transforms into troposoids which lives or stays on the surface of colonic mucosa. Now as it is a brief video, so I cannot explain each and every terminologies like what is colon or what is mucosa. So if you don't know anyhow, then you can search for it or you can leave your questions in the comment section below, right? Now let's again move back to the explanation. So the troposoid form can invade mucosal tissue and may form ulcer and can cause acute dysentery. But sometimes the troposoids passes into the bloodstream and reaches liver via the portal vein and causes amoebaic liver abscess. It can also affect other organs like lungs, kidney, brain, but very rarely. Now what are the important takeaways from this slide? Then the first one would be amoebiasis is caused by antamoeba histolytica. It has two forms, one is cyst and another one is troposoid, where the cyst form is responsible for the transmission and contamination. Then the troposoid form invades into tissues and harms other organs especially the liver. So troposoid causes extra intestinal amoebiasis. And lastly there is another thing that is while in the tissue the troposoid never turns into the cyst form. So these anti-amoebic drugs are broadly classified into luminal amoebicides and tissue amoebicides. The luminal amoebicides acts on troposoid in the gut lumen and kills them whereas the tissue amoebicides acts on the troposoid present in the tissue other than intestine. However, tissue amoebicides like nitrimidazole and alkaloids can act on both intestinal tissues and extra intestinal tissues, that is tissues outside the intestine. And here you can see the classification of anti-amoebic drugs. So there are many drugs under different classes. So we will go through each and every drug in our upcoming slides. So now let's start with the tissue amoebicide. And nitrimidazole will be the first class of drug that we will discuss under tissue amoebicide. And under nitrimidazole, the first compound or first drug that we will discuss is metronidazole. Now metronidazole is selectively toxic to anaerobic and microaerophilic microorganisms. So after entering the cell by diffusion, the nitro group of metronidazole accepts electron from a redox protein called feridoxin. Now after accepting electron from feridoxin, there is a generation or production of highly reactive nitro radical. Now this highly reactive nitro radical damages the microbial DNA and due to the damage of the microbial DNA, death of the organism occurs and this is a sidal effect. However, in the presence of oxygen, in case of some aerobic microorganisms, the highly reactive nitro radical cannot be generated. Hence, metronidazole is inactive against or we can say ineffective against aerobic microorganisms. And when it comes to the adverse effect, metronidazole produces anoroxia, nausea, metallic like test, epigastric distress, allergic reaction, polyneuropathy and it also produces disulfiram like reactions. So a disulfiram like intolerance to alcohol occurs in some patients taking metronidazole. And I would also like to add another thing that is when it comes to contraindications then metronidazole is contraindicated in neurological diseases blood dyscrasis and during first trimester of pregnancy due to its mutagenic potential. And when it comes to drug interaction, metronidazole 
potentiates the anticoagulant effect of warfarin so it increases the anticoagulant effect of warfarin drug and here these are the uses of metronidazole and after metronidazole under the same class then comes our tinidazole now tinidazole is an equally efficacious or equally effective congener of metronidazole but it is different from metronidazole as it exhibits longer duration of action and better tolerability than metronidazole and it is used for the treatment of amoebiasis, trichomoniasis and anaerobic infections and after that comes secnidazole which has a mechanism of action similar to those of metronidazole in fact all of these drugs you can see right now have a similar mechanism of action like metronidazole and secnidazole is used for the treatment of intestinal amoebiasis, giardiasis and trichomoniasis. Then comes ornidazole. It also has a longer duration of action and better tolerability than metronidazole. And it is used for the treatment of amoebiasis, trichomoniasis, giardiasis and anaerobic infections. And under nitroimidazole, here is the last drug that is satranidazole. Now satranidazole is a little bit different from rest of the drugs under this group as because it produces far better tolerability like minimal nausea, vomiting and metallic taste. And also in case of satranidazole, there is absence of neurological and disulfidum like reactions. So now we have completed the nitrimidazole group. Then let's move on to the next class of tissue amoebocyte that is alkaloids. Under alkaloids there are two drugs and those are emetin and dehydroemetin. Here emetin is an alkaloid and dehydroemetin is a synthetic derivative. And in terms of their action they both kill tissue troposoids and have no effect on the cyst form. They are highly toxic tissue amoebocytes and are used only when metronidazole is contraindicated. In terms of toxicity, dehydroemetin is less toxic than emetin. However, duration of treatment for these alkaloids should not exceed 10 days. Now when it comes to adverse effect, then emetin seriously has a long list. But we have a solution for that, not for the treatment of adverse effect, but we have a solution to remember them. We can take the word emetin itself, which acts as a mnemonic, where the E stands for emesis, M stands for muscle weakness and stiffness, then again E stands for ECG changes, then T stands for tachycardia, hypotension and arrhythmia, and for our ease, we can group three of these together because they all melt down to the cardiovascular disease. So it will be easy to remember. Then the I stands for itching and skin rash. N stands for nausea. And the last E stands for eczematoid lesions. So this is how you can memorize all these adverse effects easily, right? So now we will go to the next slide. And here is our third class of drug under tissue amoebocyte, which is 4-aminoquinolines. Under 4-aminoquinoline, the drug used is chloroquine. Now, the drug chloroquine is pretty effective in case of hepatic amoebiasis. And it is not completely absorbed from the upper gastrointestinal tract and gets concentrated in the liver. That is the reason why it shows hepatic amoebocytic effect and this is why it is very obvious that it is not effective in intestinal amoebiasis because it attains a low concentration in the gut wall and lumen. So luminal amoebocytes are added with it so that the combination can act on the intestine along with the extraintestinal action which is the obvious main principle of chloroquine. So now we are done with the tissue amoebocytes and here comes the luminal amoebocytes. 
which acts on the luminal surface of the intestine and again under this class there are three groups of drug and the first one is amide. Now under amides there are two well known drugs one is diloxanide fibroid and the other one is nitrosozanide. Now if we go for the diloxanide fibroid it kills cyst forming trophozoid in the gut lumen. So it kills the cyst that are present in the gut lumen. Now regarding its mechanism of action, after the oral administration, diloxanide furate in the gut is split into diloxanide and furoic acid. The diloxanide moiety is partly absorbed and the unabsorbed portion in the gut exerts the anti-amoebic activity. And here is one very important fact about diloxanide favorite that it is a drug of choice for asymptomatic amoebic carriers. And here the few of its adverse effects you can see. And in case of nitrosozanide, it is given orally to treat amoebiasis and giardiasis. So these are the two uses of nitrosozanide. Now when it comes to the mechanism of action, the active metabolite of nitrosozenide, that is tisozenide, which is an inhibitor of PFOR enzyme that is essential in the pathway of electron transport energy metabolism in anaerobic organisms. So the active metabolite of nitrosozenide, that is tisozenide, inhibits the enzyme which is very much essential for the electron transport energy metabolism in anaerobic microorganism. And that is the way it kills the microorganism by inhibiting the enzyme. And here these are few adverse effects of nitrosozanide as you can see. So after amide then comes the second group of drug that is 8-hydroxyquinoline. And under this group there are two drugs iodochlorohydroxyquin and the another one is iodoquinol and they shows effect in a similar fashion. The hydroxyquinolines are widely used as luminal amoebicide in the past for amoebiasis. They are effective against Entamoebia, Giardia, Trichomonas and also some fungi and bacteria. And regarding their mechanism of action, they kill the cyst forming amoebic trophozoids in the intestine but they do not have any tissue amoebicidal action. Now let's discuss the adverse effect of 8-hydroxyquinolines which is very important. So as I have told you in the beginning that they are used in the past but they are not used now because they have been banned in various countries because of their toxicity like subacute myelooptic neuropathy shortly known as SMON. Now subacute myelooptic neuropathy is an iatrogenic disease and Iatrogenic refers to any illness or disease caused due to any medication or treatment and here it is due to the 8-hydroxyquinoline and this iatrogenic disease leads to paralysis, blindness and even death. And at last the antibiotics are the group of drugs under luminal amoebicide. So under this the first antibiotic is tetracycline. Now the unabsorbed portion of older tetracyclines reaches colon and inhibits the bacterial flora which are required for the survival of Entamoeba histolytica. Okay? And the second antibiotic which is used is paramomycin and it is a aminoglycoside. It also alters the intestinal flora. However, the uses of paramomycin is very important. It acts as a luminal amoebocide and it is safe for use during pregnancy which is very important and this paramomycin can also be useful in case of calazer which is lesminiasis. So this was briefly all about anti-amoebic drug. So I hope you like this video. Thanks for watching. Stay healthy. Wash your hands. Don't go outside. Bye.